The most underestimated factor when it comes to a coach building their business is that there is a hyper focus on paid offers and not enough focus on creating the best free offer in the niche that you're positioning yourself as a leader. In plain English, people don't have free offers that are better than their competitors. And I want you to have that competitive advantage. I went through a period of 18 months doing two free webinars a week. And in the last six months, we have been testing free four-day challenges, which every day is two hours and just giving away everything that we know when it comes to building LinkedIn marketing strategy. So I think we have a little bit of experience when it comes to building better free offers and the grit, determination, and really the care for your prospect, even if they don't choose to continue working with you, that you have to have when you're designing these things. I'll let Shankar introduce himself and then we'll go into five things that you can do to create a better free offer so that you could grow your business in 2024. My name is Shankar Ponsele, owner of a marketing agency and also law of AI and all things technology. What would you say about the free offer thing before we start? We have so many people nowadays that want to sell something that are present online. We see a lot of people getting access to the market that don't really have the experience. It just has gotten almost too easy to go in front of people and tell them, here, I can help you. And that's why it only makes sense that people are hungry for the proof is in the pudding. Show, don't tell see the other perspective and create something where it's a win-win situation. You get contact information, visibility, and they get results. I want to show you just two random messages that I got last week from people that registered for last month's free challenge and already got results for it. So this was the first one. She says, hi, Shanae, I've been joining your free LinkedIn groups and started a newsletter because in the second day of the challenge, we talk about newsletter launch and growth. Today, I sent out my fifth one and within two hours of posting, I had two people outside of my network reach out to me for potential speaking engagements. I haven't talked to them yet, but that alone is a win. Thank you for making free training accessible to all. I am grateful for you, Ruby. So this is someone that is just showing their gratitude. She didn't have to do this. I appreciate you, Ruby. I love getting messages like this. It's the reason why we do what we do. Another one, Liz, thanks for the Grow Your LinkedIn for Entrepreneurs that I attended back in October. I published my first newsletter today after months of procrastination. I tried to follow your tips. I mean, you got those so often and it's just beautiful to see. So we're going to go through a process for you and your business if you want to grow in 2024. If you're a coach, this is a process that I would suggest going through if you want to create a better free offer. And what a better free offer does is that it gets more people willing to say yes to you, to potentially see and give you the chance to prove that you're the person that they should pay. Five steps for a free better offer. Number one, what you're going to do is just take some time and audit what the top coaches in your particular thing that you do are offering people in their consultation, in their webinar, in their challenge, in their ebook, so on and so forth. If your mindset, Tony Robbins is doing a webinar or a challenge, I don't think that he would be doing that unless it worked. You want to just look at the baseline of what is it that they're offering. That will give you a good perspective into what your prospects are used to when it comes to this type of learning experience. And again, it could be what do they include in a strategy session or a marketing audit or an ebook or a webinar or a challenge, whatever it is. So that's the first thing is to audit. And I would audit people, particularly in your industry, because it's a good indicator that it works and people that are at at least the top 10%. Where most coaches and consultants go wrong is step two. They don't necessarily choose a model that aligns with their particular skill set or strength. So if I am a terrible speaker and I'm just better on video, then I would probably not want to model someone that is a top person in the coaching industry that acquires a lot of their clients through only audio podcasting. If I am terrible on the phones, but I'm a great teacher 
and I can do webinars and people love them, then I should not model someone who has built a coaching business through cold calls. Does this make sense? And this is a huge mistake is that somebody will be terrible at calling, but they're modeling a top person in their industry that has built their business through cold calls. For example, you should not choose me as your coach if you want to build a business through calls because I have not built my business that way. I've built it through webinars, challenges, teaching experiences. You shouldn't choose me if you don't want to do any of those things eventually. Anything you want to add here, Sean? It does require a lot of practice. And also you should have a sense of this. I think this is going to be fun for me to do it. Just this looking forward to communicating what you have to share with the world in that format. And I think you on deep down, you know that, you know that. Like if you really don't like to teach and train, then I would probably not recommend a webinar, but maybe you love to facilitate and maybe what you could do is offer a more interactive workshop. So there's different ways to play to your strengths and to differentiate, but you really should choose a model where their strengths, personality, skill set almost match yours because you'll have a greater chance of success. Number three is to put yourself in your prospect shoes. So what you would do is sign up for some of these experiences, not because you want to copy them, but because you want to just understand what is the baseline experience if I'm someone who's looking for this result. So if I'm someone who wants to elevate my life and my mindset, I would go to three mindset challenges or webinars, and I would just see what are the principles that they're teaching, which ones do I agree with, which ones do, do I not agree with, which ones do I think would better serve the audience that are missing? You want to identify content gaps. You want to see recurring questions in the chat that may not be being addressed. Maybe because that's not their particular market and focus that maybe you could fill that gap in the market, especially if that is yours. You want to just experience those things and see what can you add that has your own flavor? What can you add to differentiate the experience to make it better and to really give your prospects a better chance of success? One of the biggest mistakes that I see with this particular step is that people want to almost outshow each other. So they try to make things extra complicated and bring in very complicated principles or strategies. It's like a one-off ego contest with the other coach. But when you're doing that, you're not focusing on the people that you could serve and you're not creating a presentation or a strategy session or any type of experience that will best help that prospect get results even if they do not choose to move forward with you. So sometimes making it simpler makes the experience better for the prospect. A lot of my stuff is simple things, but presented in a way where people could actually go do the thing. And because they actually go do it, they get results and they associate those results with us. And because they associate those results with us, we grow. Yeah, I see that often in, in free offers. There's just too much. I really encourage you to make it simpler. That's also how you show your expertise and how you get people to apply what you have shared as a tip. That's really where the magic happens. They get results. You as an expert, you know, if people just do this one thing, uh, they will see a result. And that's, of course, when people start saying, oh, well, he or she does know what she's talking about, and I will pay uh, more attention to what's coming in the future. So just to recap, step one, audit what the top people are doing in your niche. Number two, choose a model that aligns with your strengths. Number three, put yourself in your prospect's shoes and, and experience a couple of those things, whether it's a strategy session, free course, challenge, webinar, whatever. Number four, make your experience better, different, or new and leverage your unique experiences, the unique market that you speak to, and all of those things to differentiate. And number five, have patience and iterate. I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone do one or two webinars and they give up. The fact that you give up that easily just shows me that you don't want it bad enough because I did two a week for 18 months. And trust me, some of those webinars had three people on it. I showed up and did it anyway. Some of those webinars had 300 people on it. Some of those webinars flopped, zero sales after all of the effort, two hours sitting there where I'm always, almost losing my voice. Others did very well, but through that, I iterated and changed one thing at a time and got better and better and better. And had I not done that, I could very confidently say 
that I would have never been able to do the challenges because only because I invested that time and that learning and learned those skills through doing the webinars and answering all of the questions live and doing the presentation and iterating and really creating a webinar that people were like, this is the best webinar I've ever been to. Only because of that was I able to handle the challenges because the challenges are at a different level of demand. And I really think you need at least a small team to do them correctly. Go in it with a mindset that it's a learning experience. You're doing it to get better every single time. Not that the first one is going to be the big shebang. You see a lot of these people doing launches, webinars, challenges. You see them getting thousands, ten thousands or millions of registrants. It's not their first rodeo. So just know that they did that for years, usually before getting that level of success. And the reason why they're getting it now is because they didn't give up and they just kept iterating and getting better. And it's a skill. It's a skill that you cannot fake and that you have to do if you want to get good at it. If you want to see what our free offer is like, go to yougrow.club, y-o-u-grow.club and register for the four-day LinkedIn challenge. It's completely free. The first day we go through clarifying all of your LinkedIn goals. Second day is LinkedIn newsletters. Third day is content strategy. Fourth day is live events on LinkedIn so that you could grow your business. To register, go to yougrow.club and we will see you there. And you could audit our free experience.